Hi guys, welcome back. It's Mrs. Peterson, that lady who teaches art. And today we're going to talk about the lines that you want to create on the back of your line puzzle. So last, um, the last step that we did, we colored the whole front or as much as we could with our color scheme um, of the front of our puzzle. And now today we're going to talk about which lines would be great, which lines would be okay, and which lines are not even possible to cut into two puzzle pieces um, with your scissors. Because what we want is we want our puzzle pieces to be able to fit right next to each other and just pull apart and have two pieces when I cut on that zigzag line or whichever line it's gonna be. Okay, so the first one I have for us to talk about is a dotted line. Could I take a pair of scissors and cut on the dotted line and have two pieces? And I would say to this one, no, this is not possible. So we're gonna put this on our not possible list. Okay. So we don't want to use any dotted lines on this project because you're not going to be able to cut those dots apart into two pieces. Okay, let's look at our next one. How about a straight line? Would I be able to cut that one with scissors into two pieces? And I would say yes, this one is probably the easiest one to cut, so I'm going to put it on the great list because that is super easy. Could cut it pretty, pretty quickly with my scissors. All right, the next two I want to talk about are the same kind of line. They're both an embattled line, um, like the top of a castle, if I go like this. Um, but we want to say, which one would be better or easier to cut? And it's going to be the one that's bigger. So we're going to put this on our great list. This would definitely make two puzzle pieces. And this one, you could cut it, but it would take a really, really long time when you make your and battled lines so small and close together, it would take a really long time. So we're gonna put that on our okay list. Okay, what's next? Take a look at this one. How easy or hard, well, first of all, is it possible? Yes, this line is possible to cut. It's a wavy line or a scalp line, depending on which way you look at it. It is possible to cut, but it would take a really long time to cut it because it's so small. So I'm gonna put this on the okay. All right, how about a dashed line? Could I cut a dashed line and make two puzzle pieces that fit together? Nope, this one is going to be impossible for our puzzle project. Put that there. All right, next I have my curly line. If I tried to cut on this line, think about what would happen. Would I end up with two pieces? No, you'd have your two big pieces, but then you'd have all of these little pieces that fell out. So we don't want to do this one for this project. This is not possible for our puzzle project. Okay. Next, I have another wavy or scalloped line, but this one is much bigger. That means it's going to be way easier to cut. So let's put that on our great list. And I have a zigzag line. This one looks like it'd be pretty easy to cut and make two pieces and it's not too small so I could get my scissors going really well on there. I'll put that also on this list, on my great list. I have to move these over a minute. Okay, and then I have Briar one Anderson. more. My, my last zigzag is super small be hard to cut, it would take a long time, so I'm gonna put that on my okay list. All right, so we're gonna post these in the room, but you'll see that we have three that you should not use at all today. See this, the sad face, don't use those, because when you do your puzzle, it would be not the right way to cut the pieces apart. We have three that are okay. These are okay because they're too small. They're gonna be really hard to cut and take a really long time, and we wanna do this a little bit more quickly than that. These ones would be great because they are either really easy to cut like a straight line or my shapes are bigger so it would be easier for my scissors to cut those. All right. You get to decide which ones you want to use. I would definitely steer you towards the ones that are on our great list. I can't wait to see what you create. Okay, then the next thing we're going to do is take our um, puzzle and we're going to turn it to the back and your name should be written on there. Mine's right here. It's a little hard to see right now. But on the back, we are going to draw our lines. And I like to put my paper the long way, 
and then draw my lines um, the shorter way so that I can fit more in. If I go this way, it's harder to fit very many lines in for my puzzle. So I like my paper to go the landscape way and then draw from the top to the bottom. So we're going to go back to our great list. And you can do these in any order that you want. But you're going to put these on the back of your paper. So I'm going to start with that zigzag that I saw. And I don't want to make it too small because that's when it gets really hard to cut. Then maybe next I'm going to do the straight line. And you want to make sure that there's space between the line that you just did and the next line because you want one puzzle piece here, one puzzle piece here, and then my next ones are going to go here. So I still have an embattled line and a wavy line I can do. And if it's easier for you to turn the paper and do it this way, that's fine. Just make sure that there's space on this puzzle piece. And then my last one, I'm going to go do my embattled line. Okay, now while I have my um, paper laying like this, before I start cutting anything, one very helpful thing that we've discovered over the years is to number these. So if I put a number one on the first puzzle piece, and I'm going to cut right here, and then number two on my next puzzle piece, and then a number three, that part will get cut out. And then this one will be number four, and this one will be number five. If you number these, it's going to be so much easier once you put them back together. Then you're going to take your scissors and carefully cut on your lines. Remember, scissors should only be used to cut paper. And um, when you hold your scissors, you're going to want your thumb up. Turn your paper, not the scissors. So I point my scissors straight out in front of me. And I always just turn my paper as I'm going. My scissors stay out in front of me. Blades pointed away from my body. My thumb is on the top. And I just turn my paper to make it easier. Now there's my first puzzle piece. It has a number one on it. I need every single piece of paper, so don't get rid of any. None of these are scraps. You need all of the pieces. Okay, guys, once you get all of your pieces cut, then you are going to lay them back out on your black paper. And um, you should be able to see, maybe you can't see in the video, but there's numbers on these pieces. You are going to put the glue on the side where you wrote the numbers, where you drew the lines. Remember when you use glue, you're going to twist it open, and then you're going to do dot, dot, not a lot. I would say three dots of glue, not big squeezes, but three dots will be sufficient. So one dot on each corner and maybe one in the middle. And then you're going to turn this upside down when you glue it because you don't want the number to show. Okay, so the next piece, I'm going to do the same thing. Three dots. No rivers of glue, no oceans of glue. And then I want to give myself some space because we're trying to create these lines for our puzzle. We want the black to show through. Okay, so I'm going to do three dots on the next piece. Flip it over. Leave the black space. Get two more pieces. And the embattled line is the one that's a little bit trickier to get lined up. Um, I think it matters a little bit more because I like if I, we don't want to overlap it. And if I do it like this, it looks like a dash line. You can definitely do it that way if you want it to be that close. But I also kind of like it to look like there's like big squares that are or rectangles that are touching each other in the corner. So when I lay mine out, I like to lay it like that. Then your very, very last step is you're going to take a white color pencil, and in the bottom um, right-hand corner, you're going to sign your first name, last initial, and then put your class on there. So one for first grade. All right, you guys, there you have it. Now you are done with your line puzzle. I can't wait to see what you create.